Cherry eye. Cherry eye is also known as the prolapse of the third eyelid gland. The third eyelid is a fold of conjunctiva located in the ventromedial aspect of the eye. In most primates, including humans, it is a vestigial structure known as the semilunar fold of the eye. But in dogs and cats, it is well developed. It houses the superficial gland of the third eyelid, which is responsible for approximately 25 to 40 percent of tear production. And a T-shaped cartilage reinforces the structure of the third eyelid. Normally, during a blink, the eyeball moves slightly backward, allowing the third eyelid to sweep across the surface of the eye. This is a passive movement that clears debris off of the surface of the eye. In the dog, there are no specific muscles that facilitate this movement. But in the cat, a muscle is present. The prolapse occurs when the third eyelid is unable to retract back to its original position. This may be due to weakness in the connective tissue attachments, although pathogenesis remains unclear. Prolonged exposure to the external elements can make it swollen and inflamed. It looks kinda like a cherry on the eye, hence the name cherry eye. So cherry eye is likely to occur in dog breeds like Cocker Spaniels, English Bulldogs, Beagles, Boston Terriers, Basset Hounds, Shih Tzus, and Lhasa Apsos. It is less common in cats, but the Burmese breed is more commonly affected. Like if you were to choose one of the cat breeds, it would be that. Most of the time, it happens in young animals less than 2 years old. Diagnosis is primarily upon physical examination of a red mass protruding from the medial canthus of the eye. However, it's important to keep differentials at the back of your head, like neoplasia, adenitis, Horner syndrome, and others. As for treatment, medical management is often unsuccessful, and treatment is surgical. Historically, cherry eye was treated by a surgical excision of the prolapsed third eyelid. It's a very simple procedure to perform, and recurrence is close to nothing. However, because the superficial gland of the third eyelid is responsible for a significant amount of tear production, the patient may become predisposed to keratoconjunctivitis sica, or dry eye. Thus, a method of replacing the third eyelid called surgical tacking was developed. In this method, the third eyelid is placed back in its original position, and secured to the ventral orbital rim using non-absorbable sutures. Recurrence here is also pretty unlikely, and it doesn't reduce tear production. The downside is that the third eyelid can't move the way it used to, because it's anchored in place, and the sutures are foreign materials present in the membrane. The most advantageous method is known as the pocket technique. A pocket is created by making parallel incisions here and here. Cleaning things up, then suturing the two parts of the incision together over the gland. An absorbable anchor suture may be placed to keep the eyelid from protruding until the swelling goes away. This method doesn't reduce tear production, and movement is not restricted. To summarize, prolapse of the third eyelid gland is also known as cherry eye, because it looks like a cherry on the eye. Droopy-eyed breeds such as the Cocker Spaniel, English Bulldog, Beagles, Basset Hounds, and the like are predisposed. Burmese cats, too. Diagnosis is primarily upon physical examination. Treatment is surgical, with the most advantageous method being the pocket technique.